Okay. May I have your attention, please? At this time, I want to recognize all the elected officials who are with us this morning. I see Commissioner, our town commissioner, Bruce Cofield. Uh, I see our county commissioner, M. Uh, Biggs. The uh, Washington County County Commissioner Tracy Johnson. Are there anyone else? Please stand in. standing. Uh, Betty Selby is our uh, Manio, town of Manio Council Lady. Uh, that Melvin Norman. Uh, that's that's Plummer. Roper Commissioner. Well, welcome to all of you. I also want to introduce the. Uh, first of all, you heard uh, President Wesley Stokes' name mentioned multiple times. Wesley has, our president of the East Pacific Group, um, has COVID. And that's why he's not here. Uh, but we also have our past president from Gates County, um, Mr. James Sears. Uh, certainly one of my mentors, mentors to a whole lot of us uh, over the years of the North Carolina East Pacific Group. Uh, we have Betty Selby, who's our current uh, secretary. Uh, and then we have Reverend Roy Gray, who's our chaplain. Uh, I think that's all the current members of the civic group. I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. And of course, this is our, uh, uh, almost everything in terms of getting us uh, over the way, Mr. Butch, Dancy from. It's going to count. Uh, one final announcement on August 10th in the same venue. Uh, we have North Carolina Reds. They'll be coming in to give us an update on how the, what's happening with the um, Department of Transportation and how their policies impacting our community. So it's going to be very in depth. Uh, situation where you, you can voice your opinion, bring your ideas, and, and we have these conversations that's needed so we can uh, do what we need to do to, to impact the policy that's being made. All right, and one final thing, I'm, I'm going to step out on this. Have you all heard of Project 2025? Y'all see this thing about the EPA? Yeah. Well, if, if you look at one of those 31 bullets, yeah. and I consider those 31 bullets just as lethal as those bullets that we fired last Saturday, uh, that might be uh, Project 25 talks about getting rid of the EPA. Okay? So um, we have work to do. <coughs> Thank you. I think uh, Ms. Selby got some. And, and I and I can't okay, pull it up. Look, what you put the list of the terms or what? Go to my page and uh, from the third, and you'll see the uh, the list of the comments. Um, I want to add to. Um, although we are on Zoom, I am live streaming. I live stream all our meetings, and um, just like this meeting, they probably can see you all, but they can't see the presenters. But if you go to my page, you can see the presenters. But I live stream all our meetings, like you said, I'm from Edge Home County. I do this out of pocket. I was just down here last Saturday, back this Saturday. Be here next Saturday, we'll have something. Because this group, I go way back with the civic group, with the Sears and Fred Yates and all them. Um, I'm 61 years old, I ain't that old, but I've been out here a long time. But uh, this is my main group. So if you want to follow me on uh, Facebook, I got a group set page set up for the civic group. Uh, but it's not the civil group page, it's my page, so don't hold them account for anything I post up there. I try to share a whole lot of stuff going on across the state and the nation. Um, also today, uh, this is the first time I have video so I can put it on a DVD. Um, most places I go, um, funerals and stuff I do, I put it, a lot, I do a lot of funerals because the funeral home don't put them on DVD no more. They give them a flash drive, but I put mine on a DVD. And I've been video on funerals since the 90s. I've been doing meetings and stuff like this since the 90s, long before COVID, before everybody had to go to putting their videos out there. And
and I take pictures and post them. I like to capture history. And I just appreciate being in the room with, like I said, I'm 61 years old. I know some of you are older than I am. And I just love being in the room with you all and try to make sure we keep things going and pass it on down to the younger generation. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Oh, yeah. And my son has COVID today. I live in Pine Top, but I went through Greenwood to him, so he's fine. Okay. But it's my boy. I'm the third. My dad is 90 years old. Stopped by his house on the way here. So I'm, the, I'm the second. My son, the third. That's a blessing. Oh, yes. Yeah, what's the name of my kid? Oh, uh, let me get Did everybody enjoy the food? Yes. yes. Yeah, I think the caterer does a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Any other counties that was here that left? Any other counties that are here? And on Zoom, who's on Zoom? Seven. Yes, sir. Okay. So we have seven, eight counties that we have to form. Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Megan. Thank you, Eastern Carolina Civic Group. So we know and understand and appreciate all the leadership that is here, the elected officials. Um, the community leaders, civic auxiliary, and so forth, and the nine. And so as we are talking about, and I appreciate uh, Leader Matthews really grounding the threat of policy that could be a reality. Part of 2025, uh, thank you for grounding that in space. And something that we wanted to bring up that was in our slide deck is really grounding the leadership of black elected officials and black community members are the reason that the EPA even exists. And it's a shame that it took how many years for the first black man to be chosen to head mm. when we could create. And what do I mean by creating it? Cleveland Mayor Carl Stokes, his community, his river in his community caught on fire. Mm. Now, have you ever seen a picture? I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like the Cahoya, yeah, Cuyahoga River. This is a river. A body of water should not be catching on fire. And why is it because industrial pollution and waste from a corporation they kept dumping barrels and barrels and barrels of toxic contaminants, waste? 
not Ike's land until it was outlawed. Most people may know of the Times River over in England. The history with that is they dumped everything into that waterway. That's how they had the Black Plague and the Bubonic Plague and all that stuff and died into the millions because of filthy water. They, they put their sewage in the water. Whatever other trash they allowed to go into the water. And it killed them and it made them sick. We see the same behavior here today in America where there is no respect for the waterways and everything is dumped into the water. That's what happened with Flint, Michigan. It was the automobiles, it was the oil, it was the crude dumped into the water source. When they switched that system in Michigan and sent that water into their homes from that particular water source, it was full of contamination. Just like this river right here. Back in 1969, Carl Stokes, the black mayor of that city, stood up for his people because of this fire. He led a movement. We want you to know you got the power to lead a movement. As a mayor, you have the power. As a congressman, you have the power. As a congresswoman, you have the power to move such as this man did. There would be no EPA if he had not stood up and did what was called the pollution tour. We, we see this emblem, Clean Water Act. How many of you have heard Clean Water Act? But did you know that this man right here is why we have it? We don't even associate the two things. We always hear come Black History Month, ooh, them bitches are so and so and so and so. We're going to have to accept after a while, yeah. It, uh, we did it all. We did it all, and this is proof even when it comes down to the environment. We do it all. We've been knocked down, we've been beat down. Mm. But we just have to get back up. Mm -hmm. But don't let them fool you. This is what makes change and has always made change in America. Right there. And so as we see the looming threat of the removal of the EPA, people is who created the EPA that got passed in law. The EPA did not exist until literally 1970. 1972 with the first articles written to create this agency that is now trying to clean up different areas. Before then, there was no agency at all for the environment. And so as Ms. Sonia landed that plan very eloquently, the charge is we see Project 2025, but understand America didn't start with the EPA. It didn't start with a let's clean it up in mind. It started with how much can we make, and we don't care where the waste goes. It wasn't until this time, the 60s, her mayor Stokes, that this became about, which means just because they want to get rid of it, we can once again create. Absolutely. And I also want to elevate that a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to EPA. Uh, and I mean, being in community, we hear a lot of people feel like the EPA has failed them, but they don't, they don't seem to realize that policy has to be moved in order for the EPA to back that policy up. They don't make policy, they enforce policy. That's why it's important for us to vote. That's why it's important for us to make sure that people are carrying our message. And the message today is my water is dirty, my water is polluted, my water is toxic, and somebody going to have to help me with this. And I know that it's in your jurisdiction to do it. We need a policy, we need a regulation, and I'm not, I'm not voting for nobody that's not got, I'm going to get you some clean and safe water in their mouth. That's just how serious the situation is. So we definitely want to go ahead and move on to the next slide, just elevate again. Like you were saying, 50, I mean, I think they celebrate the 50 years of the EPA being created. This is just a picture where he's out in the community. As an elected official, you can't do it without the people. And we got to carry the people with us, and we got to elevate the issue. And the issue is the waters in North Carolina is in dire shape. We're going to do PFAS, but since this slide has come up, we're going, to, we're going to bring this a little bit closer home, and then we're going to talk about PFAS. How many of you have seen this advertised in your newspaper or on the news? WRAO ran this story. By show of hands, will anybody please show who has seen that? There's an advisory that 
victory announcement about the Roanoke River and there was a fire in Virginia. How many folks have seen that? Okay. Now let me share this, what gets my attention about this journalism. Most people will see that title, and it is a title, in Virginia. Well, that ain't none of me, that's in Virginia. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Oh, that's where the fire took place, that ain't none of me. Okay, but this is what I want to share today is with presenting, is that the Roanoke River and the Mahanan River, go ahead and read it. The Roanoke River and the Herring River are both under a recreational water and fish consumption advisory. After an industrial fire in Southfield, Virginia, as reported by WRAL News, Roanoke River, do not swim, boat, or eat fish due to the release of chemicals from industrial fire in Virginia. The Meharing River flows into Hertford County, a hosky, and if I mispronounce cities, y'all please correct me so we learn, Winton, W-I-N-T-O-N, Murfreesboro, Harrellsville, Hockfield, and again, Como, how do I pronounce it, C-O-M-O, folks know that Como, city, Como. Como, thank you. Roanoke River flows by the junction of North Fork and South Fork. It flows southeast into Warren County, north of Roanoke Rapids. From there, it travels along the Halifax, Northampton, Halifax, Bertie, Bertie Martin, and Bertie Washington County lines into the Bachelor Bay in the Albemarle Sound. So understand that when it's talking about the Roanoke River and the Mahari River, don't let it, don't let it fool you. It's not happening in Virginia because what? Water flows. Water moves. That's the mistake they made in Wilmington when they found that Camores had dumped PFAS into the Cape Fear River. They had been dumping that PFAS in the Cape Fear River for like 30, 40, 50 years. The hurricane came, when Hurricane Florence came, picked it up and took it. And now we're talking about counties, at least five counties now was impacted by PFAS, but it was already in the water. And the folks that were near that water were being traumatized and didn't realize it. They were coming up with weird cancers and other different health effects, and they knew something was right, but they didn't know what was right or what was wrong until the news broke out that PFAS was in the water. So if you live in any of these counties that's been elevated, this article is for you. It's for you. So what is PFAS? We're getting ready to talk about PFAS. Now, we want to be clear, in this industrial fire, what's been reported to be in the Roanoke River includes fuel, fertilizers, herbicides, but there is another, there's a more, there's more. They're listing uh, what's highly contaminant to health. So there may be other chemicals, right, that, you know, aren't registered as being health uh, uh, dangerous, but fuel, fertilizers, and herbicides are. And that's what's in, right now, flowing down due to this fire. Uh, you want to see, uh, here's some feedback. Folks said, what do I do? Avoid contact with the bodies of water noted above. That includes fishing as well as swimming. And knowing where your fish is currently being pulled from if you eat. We understand that with coastal communities, that's a primary source of food. Be aware of that, okay? And observe the advisory signage posted at access points. And of course, be aware of what's in media and on your Department of Environmental Quality both in Virginia and North Carolina, just to keep up with it. Avoid any area where there's water with a foul or chemical odor. Someone was just talking to us up here about a foul odor in their home being fairly new, and the odor just started. There might be a, a corporation, as we were discussing, or it might be a runoff from these mixtures that's coming down the river. We don't know, it depends on where your water source is coming from, so we're not assuming, but we want to be aware. Avoid any area where there's water with foul or chemical odor, dead or dying fish, or discolored water. Promptly wash your skin with soap and water. If you cannot avoid contact with water in the vicinity, rinse or wash items that come in contact with the water, including clothing, fishing gear, life vests, ropes, and paddles. Seek medical care and notify your practitioner of the exposure if you experience adverse health effects after contact with the water. And of course, we always recommend if you need any information, support, and we, we love to work with uh, everybody from uh, government level to community level. If you need testing support and what kind of testing to get 
to make sure that you're being aware of what's in your water. Let us know if we're walking through uh, where your county health department may or may not have and provide any kind of support. Sometimes we can help folks with financial need if they can't afford certain testing. If you qualify, we can also help to offshore that cost um, to support county governments. Okay? But we want to land it plain on this is the road up river. All right? One other thing, um, we'll take a couple of minutes because again, we end the day at two. So we want to do PFAS. Um, and we'll get to that fish. Yeah. Right there. Okay, you want to start again? So PFAS is an acronym. P F A S. Okay. That stands for per fluoro substance. Okay, aglo substance. And you hear if you're into again chemistry, you'll look up, you know, poly, you know, fluoro, you know, aglo. You begin to look up, you may even hear those fluoride, fluoro, right? You begin to hear words. Poly meaning multiple. So it's an acronym, it's not a catchy name, it's really not, it's a very boring name, but it's based on the science and scientists who work for corporations. Okay, not scientists that work for health departments, not scientists that work for uh, uh, your hospital, the scientists that are hired by corporate labs. So we, how many folks have had Teflon nonstick hands down to use? All right, that is one of the first signs of having a product with PFAS in it. The non-stick coating is PFAS. When they tell you don't scratch that pan, that's why they say it. You don't want to scratch it because you'll digest it. That's why. We tell folks, look, our people have been doing uh, uh, the best at recycling we used for years. How many folks grow with cast iron skillets? Mm, mm. That's right. And guess what they're recommending you go back and use? Cast iron skillets. That's right. Mm. And so, Teflon nonstick pan was one of the first, but PFAS was created by a corporation in their lab. They wanted a chem they wanted uh, 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 chemicals that could make something stain resistant and water repellent and flame retardant. Right? Those three things. So, if you have clothing, if you have a, a, a carpet, carpets. Unfortunately, the highest exposure area for children because they're on the ground. That can all have PFAS on it as a coating. If you get a popcorn, microwave or popcorn bag, guess what that wax lining on the inside is? That's PFAS. That's how the grease doesn't come out the back. And, and so you scrape it. Well, guess what you're scraping? That butter's good, but that butter's coated in PFAS. Mm -hmm. So, of course, back in the day, we would make our popcorn on what? The stove. Well, guess what they tell us to go back to? The stove. <laughs> so what we're doing is telling you, you already knew what you were doing the first time around. Right? Let's go back to where we were going, back to the beginning. Uh, and, and so a lot of this is created because of convenience. The issue is so much consumerism. We purchase so many goods, and all the time, not always in our community, a lot of people buy more than we do. But because of that, they make more and more products with more and more stuff that has PFAS on it. Think Disney toys, think North Face jackets, think uh, McDonald's, and we'll get to that, fast food meals. So this is what PFAS is, and we'll break down fast food here in a minute. But it is a group of chemicals that you, like I said, makes coatings to go on products to make them resist heat, oil, stains, grease, and water. Think about your firefighters. They use this foam. Triple is A, triple F foam. When you get that foam, that is PFAS because PFAS can suffocate a fire. So think about how much it's getting in your firefighters' outfits, uniforms. That's why they have the highest rate of cancer. And that's why many of them, unfortunately, after retirement, a high rate of firefighters, unfortunately, pass away because of that cancer from those years of activation around PFAS. And their children have higher rates of cancer because they live in a house where that outfit is coming in and out every single day, and there's been a study on that. So what you'll see, increased cholesterol levels, decreased vaccine response in children. They're now studying and realizing that PFAS also causes a block from vaccines in general. So think about how many vaccines we've had to get in the last pandemic. The effectiveness of that vaccine can be severely impacted if you have PFAS in your body. That's what studies are now showing us. You get a vaccine, think it's working, and have PFAS in there blocking. And we're like, well, how did I? Well, here we go. Mm. Changes in liver enzymes. Increased risk of high blood pressure or preeclampsia in pregnant women, similar to lead. Small decreases in infant birth weights, increased risk of kidney or testicular cancer. Here's the other thing. PFAS is passed down through the embryos. 
when a woman is pregnant, PFAS is within her system. And if she's digesting that PFAS, absorbing that PFAS in her blood system, it goes over the embryo and into the fetus. So the baby is born PFAS. There are not enough studies that have been in the past that are trying to do them now. But it doesn't, we don't have studies to show, well, what about the long-term effects through death? We don't have that yet. But what we do know is when those babies are born with PFAS, here's the other issue. If you breastfeed, well, guess what's happening? The babies get a serving of PFAS every day. Well, if you make formula water with PFAS, that baby's getting a serving of PFAS every single day. And so now that chemical is in that child through their entire developmental stage, but unfortunately, like the same mentioned lead, it can reduce in the body if you stop being exposed to it. So you can reduce lead over time. You can get lead out of it if you stop drinking, if you stop living it. PFAS is not the same. Why? Because PFAS is a human-made chemical mixture. Remember, lead comes from Mother Earth. So you can get, you can use herbs. We'll come back and do workshops around that. Or we'll even talk about how to detoxify heavy metals out your body. Because you can use natural to support removing those heavy metals out your body because lead is a natural element. Now you have to be careful if you're already on medication. That's why we can do a whole workshop on that. So we're not just recommending herbs because it could conflict with your medication as a stand. But lead you can decrease. PFAS you cannot decrease. It is called a forever chemical because it is human-made mixture and your body doesn't have the ability to break it down, can't digest it, can't move it out the blood. So you have to do heavy metal detoxes, but these are some of the issues that we've seen. Why are you going to the next slide? Uh, 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 um, just want to say that's why I come it's good to come to meetings like this because who would ever thought that PFAS had effect on COVID? And you know, that's all we heard, it won't work. Right. Now I would love to know how many people had PFAS in their system that died. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I mean, that's a heavy, you know, conversation point. Because we're still doing the, uh, the vaccine now. Yes, sir. So it's ongoing. So that's good Good information. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that feedback. And, um, Miss Sonia, do you have anything to, to add? You know, that's, that's powerful. I mean, if you elevate, I mean, again, I'm going to tell my age. I remember going to the health department when I was younger, and you could get booster shots, maybe mm -hmm. open shots before you go to school. That was it. Now it was like, get a booster after a booster, get a booster because the booster needed the booster. Needed. So it's a difference. That's true. That's true. And so, it's scale. You know, and so that's a good way of just knowing if people ain't like gaslighting you. Just, just think and just look at the difference. Even people will throw out terms like COVID. Well, COVID is not COVID. It's a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know the difference. They don't 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 know the but again, now I grew up in the country, just like maybe, I don't know how many hours away from here, but but I know what it was to snow, to see snow. That was like a common thing every time the winter came. I was reared by my mother and my grandmother, and we had a snow house, what we call, some people might call kind of a utility building today. But back in the day, it was called a snow house. And we had like a couple of hogs, and we had chickens, that whole thing. And in the smokehouse, like my grandmother would get a meat processing plant to come out, and I seen them pop the hog right in the yard, you know, like for a child, but I'm just saying. And so they would bring that meat back dressed, and then they would hang that ham in that rack. You know what I'm talking about. And you see that beating up on the outside of that uh, uh, burning. You know what I'm talking about. I wish you would have a piece of ham. <laughs> in an outside building today, if where I'm from, it would work. Because we haven't seen snow like that, I'm telling you, in decades. Mm -hmm. So I understand it might still snow in New York. I understand people like, oh, that's crazy, it's still snowing in Buffalo. But I know where I grew up, it used to snow. It doesn't snow anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's climate change. It mm -hmm. might not be climate change everywhere, mm -hmm. but it's climate change happening because the Earth is in constant rotation. Yes. And we just have to begin to look at things that's not the same. Do the June bugs, you know what I'm saying? I maybe saw a June bug the other day. I mean, when you got a spring over there. And, and you know, that's the first time. You know what I'm talking about? I don't want to know where you're from. We're from, from like Western North Carolina. If you've ever heard of Asheville, oh. Andersonville, Flat Rock, East Flat Rock is where I was born. I reared my children in Burke County, which is in Washington. And I remember the honeysuckles where you go out in the yard and pull it and the honeysuckle be on the end. Stand out there all day trying to get enough because it's a little bit of the end. Those days are gone. I mean, I just don't say that. Yeah, honeysuckle, just pull it out. I love picking blackberries when I was young to the point of picking my fingers. You didn't, I, don't, I don't know why we didn't fear a snake. Because I was picking blackberries. 
Right. But you're not getting that here. You're not getting that here. And so they found 
that there is an increased chance a child will be diagnosed with cancer in the United States, whereas uh, uh, a child of this county in the United States, okay, look at the difference. You have a 0.0179% chance that a child will be diagnosed with cancer, whereas a child in this county, because they live with someone who has a firefighter as a career, they have a nearly 50% chance, or point four, not point fifty six chance of getting cancer. And so they saw that increase, which means that these children are 27.4 times higher as a probability to get, to be diagnosed with cancer than the general population of children. So this is a research just to show what's coming through. We also want to mention what folks are saying, what should I do? We're all about giving you information and then matching with solutions, right? We gave you information about lead, then we said if you needed to be tested for lead or not. So if you don't need to be tested for lead, that's a crazy report. That's not a bad thing. You don't want to have to test for lead, right? But if you need to be tested for lead, the solution is you get a free water quality kit. So information, solution. We'll follow up, educate you on the data results, and if you are in the red, we'll you know give you a filter water picture and then try to work with your 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 child's leadership, follow their lead, and try to help remediate the issue at the source. If that means getting you testing, things like that for the county, we'll continue to follow what you need to support. We have one resident um, that attended all of our workshops. She called us on behalf of her sister. So she didn't attend workshop. She said, I need help. My sister's well has collapsed. And out of all the decades that she had a well, it never collapsed. But it was, I guess, a good time to collapse, if any, that we met them. But she was like, we need help. Well, of course, we were able to get her a five-gallon jug. We literally door dashed it. We were like, let's get her water there, let's just rush it out, and then we delivered it ourselves, another part, and then after that, we were able to connect her with another nonprofit, and she was able to pay for a whole new well. So things happen. So we're in a relationship with you all. This relationship continues as deep as y'all want it to go. Um, but another part of the education solution. Education, what is PFAS? Solution, diagnostic hands, go to the, the cast iron skillets, go to those. If you did your proper popcorn bag, start popping it on the top of the stove, mm -hmm. right? If you're looking at a new mattress, be aware, Home Depot is now passing uh, regulars where they're going to discontinue PFAS, but not yet. So be aware of which brands still have PFAS in it. Just do your education around, look up. Be like, well, does this brand have PFAS in it? Look at your carpet. You get your carpet or replace it. See if that carpet brand has PFAS on it. Those are the solutions. You can point of view to change your life just with your shopping habits. When I go to the store and I buy popcorn, let me turn away from this bag and go to this pot. It's just that presence of mind. And we're doing this step by step so everybody's not overwhelmed. Oh, I got to do everything that they don't. Get your lead testing kit, that's step one. That is step one. Step two is you're like, oh, I'm not going to use my water, I'm not going to use tap water. Well, let's help you. Know what water in the bottle water not to get. Okay? Don't get Perrier sparkling mineral water. Don't get LaCroix. Don't get Canada Dry Lemon Lime sparkling. So I know we about to get nervous. So you know we like you in the red one. So we got to get a yes, little today. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting all nervous. This is sparkling seltzer water. Poland Spring Zestin Lime. I never had that. Lime sparkling water. Bubbly Black Berry sparkling water. Polar Natural Seltzer water. And top of chin. Mineral water. You notice mineral and seltzer water. These bubbly waters here have been tested and have PFAS in them. Yes? Have you all done any testing or do you have any information on plastics and bottled water? Yes. What part of the government? How we, uh, well, how we address the bottled water is we do recommend folks that get, get bottled water to look for whatever it's going to say reverse osmosis. At least all of the contamination that's in the water has been extracted. Truthfully, there is some millimeters of PFASs in some plastics. So how we look at that according to the EPA and CDC and those standards, they treat us now if the PFAS is over a certain standard in your body once it gets tipped over a certain scale. So right now they do have PFAS quantified, but it can't go over a certain point. So if you can reduce your exposure to PFAS by choosing one of these bottles of water, even if you've got PFAS in that plastic bottle by one point, it's not like 2.0. 
200 plus of people going into your system. The perfect, the perfect situation is what? Let me just tell you what the perfect situation would be for you to have water that's good and clean with nothing in it. What would you drink it in? What would it be in order for it to be a perfect situation? Glass. 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 I told you, old fashioned, old school is the only way you're going to avoid PFAS if the water's clean and safe and it's purified. Glass. Cans, I don't, I'm not familiar with like watering cans per se. I know that uh, your boy Jake came out with the carton box. But so we'll have to look into a can because I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Water that comes in cans. They don't use plastics at all. I don't have to look into that. That's a challenge. Look, it's a liquid death. Liquid death. Great. We have our. We like research questions. This is homework. So we'll look that up. So we had a request to test cans. So we'll pull some reports and see there's been testing done on cans, that water, soda, other things. Have a great question. PFAS is different from actual. Plastic particles. That's right. That's right. That's right. Microplastics is totally different. You see us wearing these type of masks, like I was telling someone in here earlier today. We wanted to order a bunch of these and put our organization on down there, like you know, like a designer. You know what I'm saying? Because we realize that PM particular matter is in the atmosphere. We're talking about water now, but we also talk about air quality. And I like to tell people if you've ever been in a in a barn, it's a good place where it's dark and maybe you have that one window up in, in, in the top of the barn, but it's darker. You know what I'm saying? And if you look at the sunlight coming through that window, you'll see what we call a particulate matter. That means the naked eye can't see it in the dark, but it can see it in that chasm of light. Okay, we're constantly taking in that whether we see it or not. Mm-hmm. And people might look at us a little strange because we wear these, but when like pollen was up, because you're you're taking all of that into your into your airways. PFAS is also airborne. It's not just waterborne, it's airborne. There's so many contaminants, and like the Jeffrey Peace raising up, uh the microplastics are everywhere. Even when you break down like those styrofoams, like when you get packages, you should really put on a mask when you pull in that stuff. Like giving those other bottles to fly. Yes. You can inhale that. You can inhale that into your lungs. And a lot of people are finding scar tissue in the lungs and stuff is happening where we're inhaling so much pollution. And you kind of see foreign countries walk around with these masks where they're high uh, industry places. So. We think it's one thing, but it's really something else that realizes pollution in there. And I know people have the highest rates of asthma and respiratory issues, and it's because of what we are inhaling. Now, I kind of also, I'm going to keep on going back to the old days. I'm sorry. But do y'all remember when your grandpa used to pull out his handkerchief mm-hmm. and he blow his nose every now and then? He clean it good. Okay, who does that today? <laughs> we don't know what a handkerchief is. We're not even thinking about cleaning out our noses when we expect the hair to just pinch it all, but it's too much happening. We gotta go back to the old ones. And the ladies have a cute handkerchief. We're not gonna mm-hmm. leave that grandma. They have the cute handkerchiefs that cleaned out their nose and passages and stuff. So they knew what we didn't know. Or what we have seen like falling away from. Now that's respiratory health, cleaning your nose out. Getting some spray and spray it up in your nose with a, with a saline mist. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something we should do through the day is just clean your nose out with some saline and blow it. We're just impacted by so much stuff. But yes, sir, the microplastics, please be careful of bottled water that's been sitting outside of some of these stores in the sun. Mm-hmm. Then it gets cool. Got some condensation in the bottle. You know what's leaching the plastics in the water. So you want to be careful of that too. But that is at least what we can recommend right now that has no PFAS in yeah. it. This is recommended based on reverse osmosis, not based on microplastic. Yes, right. So I want to make that delineation, right? And so when we say microplastic, everything is made of plastic. There's particles that come off that plastic. It disintegrates. Um, and so, and, and you know, we'll do that's another workshop for another time. Um, really is. It's just, this, is, this is like freedom school. This is going back to school in a way, right? Um, we're learning, you know, to get back to our ways. From propelled water to sunny aquafina and essentia, 
There are tests, there are some results, research on these brands, and we've also been able to use our TDS meter to do it ourselves to see, like, is it actually hitting around that 6.97 uh, for that balanced water and it says we're So these are recommendations, so solutions. And so as we're winding down the last three minutes, we want to also land the plane to make sure folks are aware of this advisor that came out last year, all right? The Department of Health and Human Services, our state Department for Health, they uh, finally conducted research on a few fish species to see what is the PFAS in that tissue of the fish. And so they revealed their results, but not only did they reveal results, they came out with an entire state advisory that every county is under. Okay? And what is that advisory? The do not eat advisory. Huh. Mm. Fresh water fish species. These species, American shad, blue catfish, channel catfish, bluegill, uh, you see these, right? So the first, American blue and channel, no more than one eel per year. Mm, a year. Combined across all species. <laughs> one year. It. One year. Okay, this is advisory for pregnant, about the women of childbearing age, you can be in pregnant, 15 to 44, and especially for pregnant nursing uh, mothers with children. The blue hill flathead catfish, large mouth bass, and striped bass, through here, you don't eat here. Don't eat it. You're in that childbearing age zone, or you're pregnant, so you don't do it. Here for everybody else, American Shad, blue catfish, and channel, same one up there, no more than seven meals per year for everybody. Everybody, everybody else outside of that category. Oh, no more than seven meals. The blue gill, flathead, large mouth bass, and striped bass, through here, no more than one meal. Mm. For everybody, for the age, status, class, does not matter. Yeah. And when they say serving, they meant the size of a palm. Mm. They ain't talking about the platter with the three or four slices. They talking about just the size of a palm. Yeah. That's right. And so we want to take these last questions and so that we can end on time. And folks, are, you know, feel free to ask us questions as we are even breaking down because we have to do this until... 2.30, so we will end at 2, so feel free to ask questions if you want to stay behind, but we want to make sure we also adjourn on time. And so, in conclusion of this content, next steps, if you have completed this lead test kit form, we'll be in touch, the team will put it in, that kit will be mailed to you within around two weeks, all right? If you're going to be out of town, if someone already let us know that, if you're going to be out of town, let us know, and we'll put that note in, so we're making sure to send it around the time when you're going to back. The results, you turn in your kit, we encourage you to turn in those results. Within the week that you get it, watch, because we want to make sure you get your results back, so that when we come back, I saw President Stem say online that we are invited back, so that's great news. Uh, when we come back to do your results with you, we want your results to be here, right? So you can read and know your personal results. And so we also know who's in the red and needs a filter picture. We can't know that if we don't have any results. So that's the that's follow-up for folks who fill out the, the form for homes, churches, and life. If you don't need the form, that is a hallelujah price report. However, we still encourage you to come back because PFAS and other contaminants that was the Roanoke River, they're still in your water. That's what we're going to have to address. And we'll create, you know, plan of actions, support county leadership, uh, as so led uh, with the county government to see how we can support you all making sure that you're tested for other contaminants, other byproducts, distribute the drinking clean water, and then help to address if you need point of use filters. So there's more steps, even if you don't need testing, that is coming Oh, yes, and in September, last thing I'll say, and we're good for this content, and we'll stay for being. The last thing, the press conference last week that we held, it was because we were calling on, most of folks don't know about the Environmental Management Commission. Show of hands, the folks of our EMC. Okay, let's see, about one, three folks, really. Please share that with your neighbors and your friends. The Environmental Management Commission is the 15-member appointed commission that is chosen to make laws, not elected. We always look at elected officials, and we're like, if I don't see that face on a billboard, I don't see them. Appointed officials sometimes have a bigger budget and more authority over certain areas than some of our elected officials, but we don't even know them. We don't keep up with them. So when you hear appointed official, you understand you need to regard that as an elected official because they may have a budget, they may have the ability to create laws, and you're over here yelling, we are over here yelling at elected officials, and that ain't even their authority. That's not their jurisdiction. That's your biggest issue. We're over here elected such and such. Why did you fix this? That's not my jurisdiction. It's appointed such and such. And we're like, I don't even know what an appointed is. That's 
less important. So this appointed 15 member of the council, they were appointed part, some of them were appointed by the governor a little bit. The others was appointed by the Senate pro tem and Speaker of the House. You understand the, the, the makeup. A lot of folks in that unfortunate makeup don't believe in environmental issues of degradation. All right? And they are the body. There's no diverse representation at all. Not in age, not in race, not even in socioeconomic class. And they got really rural folks up there. Yeah. Folks who posture, but they make a certain house. I'm going to leave that there. But they are making laws, and they have a law right now that they're supposed to be making a choice on. Our Department of Environmental Quality, DEQ. Most folks heard about DEQ. DEQ has gone to them. That's their boss. And they said, we tested eight PFAS into the fish, into people's drinking water, and we just need y'all to pass the law to move the eight out. These folks are saying, mm, and we saw in person. In person. In person. They were like, mm, I don't know if we really want to. Why not? It's cheaper for them to move it out because if they move the law and move these eight chemicals out, guess what it becomes? A public health. And when it's public health, that means the county government gets money. Now, why would you make sure your elected officials on the local level have money and pass this law so they have the money to move it out to drink the water? Why not? Corporation interest. People being paid off. So we do the press conference to call on them to say remove all that. And they decided that day that they were going to delay the vote once again. They saw the people who were on the news, and that vote is in September. So we will be sending out to you all. We will be doing actions because a lot of the excuse they use is we haven't heard from the people. Most of the people don't even know what they mean. Most people don't even know they exist. Well, that's changed because we came out and said we know who you are by name, by faith, and we know what you're doing. And so we were able to hear back from people in the governor's cabinet that heard our press conference, actually broadcasted the press conference in the governor's cabinet while we were doing it. So there's a lot moving because of the power that's in this group. I'm going to say this. So we will let you know in September that's the vote. But leading up to that, we're going to be activated and we definitely will continue to be in collaboration with the Certified Civic Group with President Stokes and the other leaders who came and make everyone aware of what we're doing and hopefully work with you all to amplify need that law change and then our actual governments on the local level and have the support to move us out to drink of water and not figuring out well, how do we do it. This is how we do it. Alright, so we are wrapped for today. So thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She wants your attention, please. We have our Tech Civic Group meeting August the 10th. We meet every second Saturday of the month. We'll be meeting in Williamson at um, the Omni Provident Structure at 600 Smithwick Road here in Williamson. We meet at 11 o'clock. We would love to have you here August the 10th. We also have another event on September the 28th where we have invited candidates as running for state um, and state council. And who else is it? On September 28th, we're at, we're having a candidate gala. Tickets are $25. Um, look for tickets. Mr. Matthews will have them probably next week. So September 28th, please join us for our candidate gala, gala gala. Also, on December the 6th, happy birthday, Jimmy. Um, on December the 6th, we'll have our annual Christmas Day month in Nagpin, North Carolina. That's a big event. It's a formal event, so just write it down. Benny, on the 10th of next month, we'll be right here. Oh, we're going to be here right here. Okay, okay. Uh, that's right. What are we doing on the 10th? He's going to be here. Yes, he's going to be here. Oh, okay. I need to sit down. I'm going to sit. Uh -huh.